In this short video, I'll show you how to find the domain and range of natural logarithmic functions. This is part one of the series. To start, the graph of ln x looks like this. And this will help us visualize the domain and range once we find it. Let's start with question one. Question one reads, find the domain and range of f at x is equal to ln x minus five. Now one thing that you need to know about logarithmic functions is that this part right here must be greater than zero. If it's equal to zero, you'll get an error. So that being said, to find the domain, we have to find out where this part can't be zero. And to do that, we'll set x minus five must be greater than zero. Now to solve for x, to solve for this inequality, treat this sign as an equal sign. So pretend it's an equal sign, bring that five over, and you end up with x must be greater than five. And that's your domain. Now to find the range, you have to ask yourself, what values can f at x take on? Now if you take a look at the graph, you'll notice that this red line will continue to go down and this part will continue to increase. And that says that y can be any real value. So we'll say that y can take on any real value and the domain, which I'll represent like this, domain is x such that x must be greater than 5 for all real values of x. Let's move on to question number 2. In question number 2, they're asking us to find the domain of this function. Now this function, as you can tell, is a lot more complicated than the previous one. And there's a lot going on. You have to find the restrictions for the top, for the bottom, and what's inside the natural log. Now we know that for radicals, the radicand, which is this part right here, must be greater or equal to zero. Anything less than zero will result into an error. So the first thing that we'll do is set the radicand, which is one minus two to the power of t, must be greater or equal to zero. The first step is to bring this one over, and if we do that, that one becomes negative one. And on the left side, we have negative two to the power of t. Now we have to get rid of this negative before we can isolate for this t. And the way we get rid of this negative is by dividing both sides by negative one. If you divide both sides by a negative, when it comes to inequalities, the symbol will change. So it flips this way. Dividing both sides by negative one gets you positive one on the right side. And on the left side, positive two to the power of t. So now the inequality is two to the power of t must be less than or equal to one. Now to solve for this t, you'll need to law on both sides. And that's the only way to bring the t to a position where it can be isolated. So if I law on both sides, I end up with ln of two to the power of t, and what you do to one side, you do to the other. This t goes to the front, that's the power rule in logs. And on the right side, you have ln one. Now to isolate for t, you're gonna divide both sides by ln two, ln one over ln two. And ln one divided by ln two, let's use our calculator, divided by ln two gives us zero. For our next restriction, we'll focus on the denominator. And we know that the denominator cannot equal to zero. So we're going to set ln t plus three cannot equal to zero. So to solve for t, we're going to take both sides as powers to the base e. That's the only way you can isolate for t by canceling out this natural log. Here's what I mean. e to the power of ln t plus three cannot equal to e to the power of zero. e to the power of zero is equal to one. Anything to the power of zero is equal to one. And on the left side, this e will cancel out with the ln, and you're left with t plus three cannot equal to one, bringing this over, one minus three, you end up with t cannot equal to negative two. And lastly, you'll notice that this t plus three, like in the previous example, needs to be greater than zero. Anything that is zero and less will result in an error. So this part, t plus three, must be greater than zero. Solving for t, we end up with t must be greater than negative three. So we have three restrictions, and to make sense of this, we'll write these down in a number line, and from that we'll be able to derive our domain. Here's what I mean. We'll start with a number line, 
negative 2, and negative 3. And we know, according to this one, that t must be greater than negative 3. Now, since it cannot equal to negative 3, we're going to use a hollow circle to represent that it cannot equal to negative 3. And it moves this way, infinitely. Now, t cannot equal to negative 2. So we're going to put a hollow circle right there. And lastly, t must be less than or equal to 0. So that being said, since it can be equal to 0, I'm going to use a solid circle here. And it's going to go in this direction. I'm going to highlight next the commonalities. Now, where are these lines in common? You'll notice that over here and over here, they are in common. And that will represent your domain. So let's write that down. The domain, I'm going to introduce these curly brackets, x such that x cannot equal to negative 2 and x must be between negative 2 and notice that it cannot be negative 2 so I'm not putting an equal sign there and x must be less than or equal to 0 for all real values of x. So there you have it. That is how to find the domain and range of certain natural logarithmic functions. If you found this tutorial helpful, please support our channel by subscribing or by liking this video. If you have any further questions, you may visit our website at studyforce.com. We are an online service for students seeking free homework help. See you soon.